Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Hayanawa Yahweh Akar. Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Hayanawa Yahweh Akar. Shema Yasha Allah Yahweh Allah Hayanawa Yahweh Akar. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba Shemma Yahweh Shah. On the behalf of the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we bring in you another edition concerning Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. Also, be sure to support Solid Foundation International Ministries. I am your host, Shabar Judah Israel. We're going to get in and out with this lesson. Double honors to the elders, salutations to the Akim that's preaching his truth, teaching his truth, in season and out of season, prophesying the downfall of America, waking up one black, Hispanic, and Native American at the time. Why? Because according to the Bible, the biblical prophecies, you are the chosen people, the Israelites. Now, what is this lesson about? This lesson is about concerning the book of Enoch. Now, what you see before you, brothers and sisters, I have two copies of the book of Enoch. I have one copy by Stephen Ash, and I have another copy by John D. Ladd. And there are many other copies of the book of Enoch besides these two that I'm holding up before you, brothers and sisters. I was asked um, concerning the book of Enoch, does it go hand in hand to scripture? Does it line up? Does it correlate to the Bible? Is it synced to the Bible? Is it, is it biblical inspired? Is the book of Enoch biblical inspired and does it line up with the Bible? Okay. Is it safe to go into the book of Enoch? Okay. Can the book of Enoch be proven to be biblical inspired? Well, say no more brothers and sisters. This lesson is official. And we're going straight into it. So let's get it. See this guy right here? Brothers and sisters, don't have a whole lot of time on my hand, but I'm going to try to do this lesson super fast. You see this guy right here? Many of you may not know this guy, but brothers and sisters, we're going to give you some history concerning what? The book of Enoch. The guy that you're looking at, this guy's name is James Bruce. James Bruce, he's an Edomite, a descendant of Esau, so-called white man. He's an Edomite. We all know the children of Esau, the white man, is the goddamn devil that the Bible speaks of. So first and foremost, know that, brothers and sisters, before we go any further. The Edomites are your enemies, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Why? Because they are, uh, they are the ones that plotted to subdue you and take you down and keep your secret hidden from you for many ages. So we don't trust the Edomites. We don't trust the so-called white man. And I'm saying that for a reason because when you think of James Bruce, you think of the book of Enoch. I don't care what version that you possess, but you think of the book of Enoch. Now, why do I say that? Because, let's say James Bruce, he was sent to Ethiopia. This guy that you see, he was sent to Ethiopia. Well, well he because he had heard that copies of the book of Enoch existed in the book of Ethiopia. I mean, Salah, he had heard that the copies of the book of Enoch existed in Ethiopia. All right? And um, he... Um, He went to Ethiopia, all right, and this was like around 1768, because I have a lot of information to bring out in a short nick of time. So he went to Ethiopia around like 1768, because he had heard that the Book of Enoch uh, existed in Ethiopia in, in many copies, in the Ethiopia, what you would call the G's language. So he went to Ethiopia in 1768. And um, James Bruce located several copies of the Book of Enoch. So he did go to Ethiopia to locate several copies of the Book of Enoch in 1768. Now, and once he possessed the copies, he brought those copies back to England. All right? So, what you need to know in Ethiopia, there was a church called the Abyssinian Church in Ethiopia. And um, they always accepted the Book of Enoch to be uh, inspired scripture. But was that the was that was that the legitimate copy of the Book of Enoch in Ethiopia? Was that was that the actual copy of the Book of Enoch in Ethiopia that Jude quoted from? Because we know that 
Jude quoted from the book of Enoch, and we'll show you that. This is Jude 1 and 14 in your King James Bible. It says that Enoch, also the seven from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So we're not going to refute that Jude did not quote from the book of Enoch. Jude quoted from the book of Enoch. But the book of Enoch that Jude quoted from was not the same book of Enoch that uh, that uh, James Bruce. It was not the same Enoch that James Bruce went over there and discovered in Ethiopia. It was not the same Enoch that James Bruce went over to Ethiopia to get to bring back to England. Okay. So in Ethiopia they had this Abyssinian church that always accepted this book to be the legitimate copy of the book of Enoch. But those Ethiopians was truly wrong. All right. And what they did, they protected this book down through ages in Ethiopia because they thought that was the legitimate book of the book of Enoch. So the Abyssinian church in Ethiopia, they protected this book thinking that it was the real book of Enoch, which it wasn't. It wasn't the same book that Jude quoted from. And that's what you need to know today because many brothers go out and get this book of Enoch, get various books, uh, versions of Enoch, thinking that it's the same Enoch that Jude quoted from, but it's not. But going on with the story concerning James Bruce, you had the Abyssinian church in Ethiopia that was protecting these books because they thought this was the legitimate copy of Enoch, right? And they protected these books down through the ages. Okay? And then these books end up being lost to most of the Christian world for many centuries. And they were still being preserved, kept in Ethiopia by the Abyssinian church because they thought that uh, the book of Enoch that they had was the legitimate book. So, you know, James Bruce got these books, copies from Ethiopia, took these copies to England, and 50 years after James Bruce brought it to England, this guy named Richard Lawrence, let's pull up Richard Lawrence. Couldn't find a picture of Richard Lawrence, but Richard Lawrence uh, made a first modern translation of what you know as the Book of Enoch, man. But it still wasn't the legit, legitimate copy of the book Enoch. And then after Richard Lawrence made the first modern day translation, later on you got you got this guy named um, you got this guy by the name of R. H. Charles that made another translation using some Greek excerpts. So you know, uh, before we go any further with this lesson, Enoch was not a pale skinned man. Okay, Enoch was not a white man. Enoch Enoch was not a cracker man. All right, he was not. You know why? Because during the days of Enoch, there was no so-called white people on the earth during that time. So-called white man came during the time of Esau being born. Um, and that's like in Genesis, the 25th chapter. Esau is the progenitor or the forefather of the so-called white race. So you, we, we talking about Enoch before Esau was even born. There was no so-called white people on the earth during the days of the patriarchs. Um, that's another lesson within itself. But Enoch was a dark um, skin melanated man you know pretty much how we look like today and he was from that uh, righteous uh, bloodline he was a, a Sethite from the bloodline of Seth but anyways you had this guy named R.H. Charles right that made another translation using some Greek excerpts and then and then recently you had this guy by the name of um Michael A. Nib, Michael A. Nib, using many texts and partial texts, put together an adequate translation of the Book of Enoch. So the Book of Enoch, man, the the actual manuscript which was written in Paleo Hebrew, that was never found. You know, so it backs all the way up to um, some copies being found in Ethiopia. In the Ethiopian language, which is known as G's, these copies was found by James Bruce because he had heard they was located over there. So he did locate several copies of the Book of Enoch from Ethiopia in the uh, Ethiopian uh, language, G's. And he brought those copies back to uh, England, brothers and sisters. And uh, 50 years later, after James Bruce brought those copies back to England, you had Richard Lawrence that made the first modern day translation modern translation 
that then you had R.H. Charles, all right, brothers and sisters, that made another translation using some Greek excerpts. And then last, you had this guy, Michael A. Neal, which you see right here, that used many texts and partial texts, and he put together an adequate translation, which you got uh, the Book of Enoch today. You know, and there are many modern day, many modern versions of the Book of Enoch, but they are not the same Enoch that Jude quoted from in 1 and 14. Okay, the book of Enoch today is not the same Enoch that Jude quoted from. Okay, because they never found it. You understand? So, yeah, all these translations are rough, obscure, and confusing. And that's what this says in the book of Enoch on page 32 in the introduction. On page 32, in the book of Enoch, on page 32, it says... All these translations of the book of Enoch, going back to the copies, early copies being found in Ethiopia, it says, yet all these translations are rough, obscure, and confusing. So what they telling you? The very book of Enoch that you possess today, brothers and sisters, you cannot rely on. They are confusing. What about the Dead Sea Scrolls? What about the Dead Sea Scrolls? The Dead Sea Scrolls contain many copies and partial copies of the book of Enoch. Okay. The Dead Sea Scrolls contains many copies and partial copies of the book of Enoch. Okay. And those Dead Sea Scrolls that contain many copies and partial copies of the book of Enoch have been altered today. They have been altered by the so called white man, which is the devil. So you would never know the full truth concerning the book of Enoch. And the very book of Enoch that you have today, you can't rely on this, man. All right. Actually, the Dead Sea Scroll that contains many copies and partial copies of the Book of Enoch. Actually, the Dead Sea Scrolls there was found seventeen copies of the Book of Enoch, and I'm pretty sure those Dead Sea Scrolls was legit, and they did have the legitimate information of the Book of Enoch, the partial copies of the Book of Enoch in there. But the goddamn white man, he has submerged that. And he's not going to give you the truth. He has altered those copies and give you watered down copies today. You know, so don't rely on the book of Enoch today that you have because it's not the same scroll or text that Jude quoted from in uh, chapter 114 of Jude. All right. This book of Enoch today is not legit. I have the book of Enoch today because I'm going to show you uh, many errors in this book. I'm going to show you that it's not biblical inspired. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't correlate with the Bible. I'm going to show you actually the book of Enoch. Actually the book of Enoch is far from the Bible in the scriptures. I'm going to show you that. Don't worry about it. Just sit back. This is a wonderful lesson. Pause the video. Go get you some popcorns or something. Go get you a nice cold beverage. Because you're about to be amazed after I bring this truth out today. Because I was asked, was the book of Enoch biblically inspired? And hell no it's not. Okay, so uh, some have questioned that the original language of the book of Enoch, some say that the original language of the book of Enoch was this and that and this and that. But what was the original language of the book of Enoch? Well, we already know the original language of the book of Enoch was Paleo-Hebrew. Because the manuscripts, uh, uh, you know, concerning the Dead Sea Scrolls, you got to understand the earth the inhabitants of the earth started off with one specific language, and that was Hebrew. So the manuscripts available upon examination and study show the original language was Semitic, or what they call Hebrew, or Paleo-Hebrew, concerning the book of Enoch. And that's consistent of the Dead Sea Scrolls that was written in Paleo-Hebrew. Alright, so the original language that the book of Enoch was established in was the Hebrew. Alright, that's not hard at all. So the original language used by Enoch would have been the original language, the Paleo-Hebrew, or some call it Aramaic, Aramaic, which goes back to the Paleo-Hebrew. Step away from the Paleo-Hebrew. So this guy claims on page 33 in this book of Enoch by John D. Ladd, he says that the book of Enoch, as an end result, you will find, I believe, he said, I believe. I believe, he said, you will find that Enoch does not contradict any word of God, but rather it confirms, explains, and stirs up fresh interest in understanding the Bible. That's a goddamn lie. 
brothers and sisters, I'm here to point that out. I'm got, I'm about to tear down this damn stronghold. Uh, once again, like seems like this chauffeur don't want to stay on the post. But anyways, I'm about to tear down this stronghold to show you that the book of Enoch is not in correspondence to the Bible. It's not. You ready for it? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get it. Get out your pens, your paper, and your pads. Please ask this 12 and 12. Let's go. It says, Any further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end, and much study of much study is a weirdness of the flesh. So the making of many books, man, the making of many books. We know that these modern day books concerning Enoch today is not the actual legitimate book that Jude quoted from. They are making a many of these books of Enoch, brothers and sisters. You can see it right here. I'm not making it up. See that? Enoch 3. Okay, wait a minute. Let's go back. Enoch 3. Enoch 1. Um, Enoch, Enoch, Enoch 2. You know, actually, it's three parts, like I stated, of Enoch. The making of many books of Enoch, man. Okay. Just do your own research and you'll see what I'm talking about. There are many makings of the books of Enoch pursuing the two Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. It says that of many, many making, making of many books, there is no end. And much study is weirdness of the flesh. So you might get deep, you might get too deep in this book and you might get discouraged, man. It might you might get too deep in this book and that, it might become weirdness to your spirit, man. Cause it's Enoch one, two, and three, and neither one of them is legit, and neither one of them lines up with the scriptures, and we're gonna show you that. So let's move on to the next book, chapter, and verse. Let's go to Gal uh not Galatians, but Corinthians, not Corinthians, but Colossians two and eight. Colossians two and eight. Beware at least any man spoil you through philosophy. This is what you got, man. This philosophy. This is not legit. This is not what Jude quoted from. Beware at least any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. This vain deceit, because we're going to show you it's vain deceit. It don't profit nothing because it don't support the biblical scriptures. It's vain deceit and it's after the tradition of man. Okay, and not after the rudiments of the world and not after uh, Hamashiach, Yahweh who they call Jesus Christ. This is after the tradition of man. You know why? Because we got to test the spirits to see if the spirit is true, brothers and sisters. So let's go to 1 John 4 and 1. All right? 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. What that means? A spirit is in reference to like a, a doctrine. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Rather, they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So we're going to try the spirits on today. Brothers and sisters, to see whether they are the Most High, Yahweh by Shimei on Shai, to see whether this is of God or not. We have to try the spirits. 1 John 4 and 1. We must try the spirits to see whether they are of God. You're going to find out this is far from the Most High God. This is not, this is not, once again, in correlation to the Holy Scripture. This is not correlation to the Bible. This is far. The book of Enoch is far from the Bible. We're going to show you. That's why before we show you, we got to try the spirits. We got to test the spirits. Try the spirits whether they are of God. Because why? Many false prophets are going out into the world. So that's what we're going to do on today concerning what? The book of Enoch. We're going to try these spirits. Okay. You will be amazed by the end of this lesson. Let's go to the next one. Ezekiel 13 and 9. Ezekiel 13 and 9. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies like these books, like the modern day books of the Virgin of Enoch. They shall not be in their assembly of my people. Okay, because these books don't got a goddamn thing to do with Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and they is vain to see and they say they shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of the uh, of the land of Israel. Okay, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Uh, the, I am Yahweh, basically your power. So we testifying against these books to show you that these books are not accurate. Next verse. Let's move on. Second Timothy four and three. 
For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heat themselves, teachers having itching, itching ears. So it's going to come a point in time where these people, uh, the inhabitants, is not going to endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. So we living in the last days where people don't endure sound doctrine because they turn into all different type of sources, man. You understand? 2 Timothy 4 and 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. These books are nothing but goddamn fables, man, that we cast down. We cast down these goddamn fables because many people have turned their ears from the truth and they have turned to fables. We're going to show you, man. Don't worry about it. We're going to show you. Hold your horses. Don't get upset. We're going to show you what I'm talking about. If you will have a, a, a patient spirit, we're going to show you. So let's test the spirits. We're in the book of Enoch. As you can see, we're in the book of Enoch. Now, it says, R.H. Charles. We already know, gave you that information about uh, R.H. Charles. R.H. Charles made, basically, R.H. Charles made another translation using some Greek excerpts and, and more Ethiopian texts. So you had R.H. Charles that made translations of the book of Enoch by using Greek excerpts. And then later on, you had the guy Michael A. Neal. Now, before R.H. Charles was Richard Lawrence. So this, as you can see, is concerning R.H. Charles of Oxford. Now, let's see concerning the book of Enoch. Let's see, is it in correspondence to the Bible? Now, we're not going to, um, we'll read chapter 1. The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect in righteousness, who would be, who would be, it says, living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. He took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angel showed me. From then, from them I heard everything, and from them I understood, as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and I took up parable concerning them, right? Now, basically, Enoch supposed to establish this book. I'm not saying that, the, that, the, uh, that Enoch, a righteous man, did not establish a book. I'm not saying that, brothers and sisters. That book that Enoch, the, uh, the descendant of self, did establish, however, cannot be found today. But many have been led to believe these modern day books are the same, uh, the same Hebraic text that he established, which it is not. So, we're in the book of Enoch online. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you because I'm going to prove that this book of Enoch is not in correspondence to the Bible. So, let's head over to the book of Enoch, chapter 6. Let's head over to chapter 6, if you will, brothers and sisters. This is Enoch, chapter 6. It says, And it came to pass when the children of men, the children of men, brothers and sisters, are what you would call the modern day heathens or Gentiles today. In the beginning of time, there was no such thing as nations of people. There was categorized three sections of people in the beginning of time. You had sons of God, which are modern-day Israelites. You had sons of man or children of man, which is the modern-day Gentiles or the heathen. And then, last but not least, you had the sons of the wicked, okay, which is the modern-day Edomites today, the descendants of Esau, that wicked seed of Cain. All right, so in the beginning of time, you had three subdivisions of men. They was not known as nations. You had sons of God, which is modern-day Israelites. Sons of man, or some some may some may say uh, um, children of man, and then you had sons of the wicked. So it's talking about it came to pass when the children of man had multiplied that in those days were born unto them, right? Now when you go into the Bible, when you go into the Bible, this is Genesis chapter six. Genesis chapter six and the same thing in the King James Bible, Genesis six and one. It came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters was born unto them, which in the book of Enoch, it states that it came to pass in the book of Enoch chapter 6, 
It states that it came to pass that the children of man had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. The children of man back then, or what you would call the sons of man back then, was the modern day heathens, the Gentiles. Same thing in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Back then, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Okay. Alright. The daughters were born unto them. Genesis chapter 6. That the sons of God saw the daughters of man, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all, of, of all whom they chose. Now, I'm not going to do a lesson breaking down the sons of God. But you have to look at my video concerning, um, uh, I think I have a video concerning SFIA. And it speaks of, there's no such thing as fallen angels or something like that. Check that out. But the sons of God was known as the modern day Israelites, the, the chosen people. That was their title back then before they received the name Israel. They was known as sons of God. Because all those sons of God, those was that righteous lineage that came out of Seth's bloodline, which was the third son of Adam and Eve. And Seth had a righteous bloodline. However, Cain had a wicked bloodline. And you had the Sethites that went and married into the lineage of the daughters of Cain. The daughters of Cain was known as uh, the, uh, the daughters of men. You know... And you had the sons of God, which were the Sethite, that righteous lineage, that saw, that saw the daughters of man, that they was fair, that saw basically the daughters of the descend of descendants of Cain, saw that it was fair, and they took them wives of all that, who they chose. So what Genesis 6 is, is talking about is first time that interracial marriage was instituted on the earth. But it's in a metaphorical, it's in a metaphorical, a metaphorical phrase, it's in an allegorical phrase, or what you would call a figurative phrase or some militarized phrase. You know what I'm saying? So the sons of God are related to the Sethites that took the daughters of man, the daughters of the uh, the daughters of the descendants of Cain, and they married into those they 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 they, they intermingled. They mixed the holy seed among the daughters of Cain, man. You know that's what it's talking about. So the book of uh, Enoch and the book of Enoch in chapter six Similar to chapter 6 in Genesis, the book of Enoch chapter 6, it says, in the angels, it says that in those days, when the children of man had multiplied in those days, were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. In Enoch chapter 6 and 1, Enoch 6 and 2, so like, it says, the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted out the, the, uh, the daughters of men, okay? But it never said angels, brothers and sisters, like the book of Enoch chapter 6 state angels. It never said angels, brothers and sisters. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 2 in the Bible, King James, it said that the sons of God, it never said angels. That's why we got to test the spirit to see if the spirit is true. So the book of Enoch, brothers and sisters, chapter 6 in the book of Enoch, it's not lining up with chapter 6 in the King James. Because the King James tells you that the sons of God took daughters of man. But the book of Enoch tells you that angels took daughters of man. Sons of God, brothers and sisters, they were not celestial beings. The sons of God was just the descendants of Sethites, the righteous lineage. However, in Genesis chapter 6 concerning Enoch, it tells you that there were angels. Nowhere in Genesis chapter 6 in your Bible mentions anything about angels. You know, some people say, well, the sons of God, they were called angels. No, they were not. No, they were not. The sons of God were never called angels. Like the book of Enoch chapter 6 will have you to believe. Because it says in Enoch 6, the angels, the sons of God were never called angels. How do we know that? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. This is Hebrews chapter 1 in your King James Bible. We got to test the spirits to see if they're true or not. To see if they are the most high. Now watch this. It's talking about Hebrews 1 talks about Jesus the Christ who we better yet know as your hour shot. It says Hebrews 1 and 4 being made so much better than the angels because the Messiah was made better than the angels as he by as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Watch this, Hebrews 1 and 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. 
So the Most High is telling you right here, he never told the angels at any time that they were his son and that this day that he had begotten them. He never told the angels that. However, he did tell Israel that they was his son and he also told the Messiah that he was his son. See, it says, and again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Basically what it's saying, did he say to the angels in Hebrews 1 and 5, did he say to the angels at any time, that the angels was his son, that thou art my son? Did he say to the angels that this day I have begotten thee? Did he say to the angels, I would be to him a father? Did he say to the angels, I, and, and he shall be to me a son? No, he never told the angels that. However, he did tell Israel that they was his son. And he did tell Yahweh, who they call Jesus Christ, that that was his begotten son. But uh, However, he never said to the angels at any time that thou was his son. See that, brothers and sisters? So your book of Enoch, chapter 6, is a damn lie. That's not the same book of Enoch that Jude quoted from. So when it says the angels saw the children, saw the daughters of man, the angels which are the children of heaven saw and lusted after these women and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives. Let us, let us, let us choose us wives from among the children of man. Supposedly in the book of Enoch chapter 6, the angels said, let us choose wives from, the, from among the children of man. Angels don't have sex, man. We'll show you that in your King James Bible. So we can see right there so far in Hebrews 1 and 5, he never said the angels at any time was his son. And that's why I told you in Genesis 6 and 1. Or Genesis 6 and 2. It said that the sons of God saw the daughters of man that they was fair. It never said the angels. So your book of Enoch is a goddamn lie. Alright? This is a lie. When it says the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after the daughters of man. Never said that. Your King James Bible in Genesis 6 and 2 tell you the sons of God. So in Genesis chapter 6, it never mentions anything about angels. It said sons of God. Who are the sons of God? The sons of God was that righteous lineage that came from self bloodline, the third son of Adam and Eve. But who were these daughters of man? They were the daughters that came from the wicked lineage of Cain. Who the sons of God, the righteous lineage of self, married into their line. Okay? Genesis 6 and 3. And the Lord, Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He never said angels. He said men. All the sons of God was not angels. They were men. Righteous men from self lineage. For that he is also flesh. Okay. You can see that the sons of God was righteous men. The sons of God was righteous men. And they was also flesh. They was not celestial beings. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So men days were numbered. If these was angels, angels don't have stipulation to the, the limitation of years. They is infinite power. They live forever. You understand? So Genesis 6 and 4 goes on to say that there was giants in the earth in those days. There was giants in the earth in those days, which goes back to Nephilim, which goes back to fallen ones. So in those days, the sons of God, this righteous lineage of self, which were men, which was flesh, their days became numbered. To be 120 years. Why? Because they were giants in those days. Meaning that there was Nephilim. They was fallen ones in those days. They fell from high statue in the earth in those days. And it says, After when the sons of God, which were the righteous lineage of self, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, came into the daughters of the lineage of Cain, that wicked lineage, and they bare children to them, there became mighty men, which men of, of, of old and renown. Basically, they bear children that were skillful men in weaponry and in art. They were skillful men in weaponry and art. You know, that's all it's talking about. They were mighty men. They were very skillful in weaponry and things in that nature. But we're going to show you that the book of Enoch is not legit. Because it talks about angels. Now, it's Genesis, I mean, uh, and... In book of Enoch chapter 6, supposedly the angel said, let's go get these daughters and said to one another, come, let us choose us wives among the children of man. 
Let us beget children. Now, I'm going to show you that angels don't even marry because the book of Enoch chapter 6 telling you that angels slept with daughters of men and begat children. Angels don't marry. How do we know that? We'll show you easily. Angels don't marry. Matthew 22 and 29. We're going to start right here in the gospel of Matthew in the King James Bible. Yahweh shot who they call Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err not knowing the scriptures. Why did he say that? Because let's read up a little bit. Matthew 22 and 23. The same day came unto him the Sadducees, which was the Jews, okay, which were, uh, like I say, the Jews, leaders during that time, which say that there is no resurrection because the Sadducees, they didn't believe in a the resurrection. They didn't believe in the afterlife. They believed YOLO. You only live once and that was it. Matthew 22 and 24, saying, Master Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, raise up seed unto his brother. Matthew 22, 25. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Because there was a law in Israel saying that if you had a particular woman you was married to, you didn't leave behind seed for that, into that woman you was married to, that your brother had to take upon that woman to leave a seed to leave seed behind for you so your name would not be blotted out of Israel. Matthew 22 and 26. Likewise, the second also and the third and to the seventh. Matthew 22 and 27. Last of all the women died also. So at last of all the women died also. There were seven brothers that didn't leave behind seed. And last but not least, the woman died also. Matthew 22, 28, therefore in the resurrection, who wife shall she be of the seven brothers that didn't leave behind seed? For they all had her. Matthew 22 and 29, Yahweh Shai, who they called Jesus, answered and said unto them, Ye do err not, knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Matthew 22, 30, for in the resurrection they neither marry. Because in the resurrection, when you die, you become a celestial being, man. When you die, you become a celestial being. You are no longer terrestrial. When you die, you give up the ghost, you become a celestial being. For in the resurrection, celestial beings, they neither marry nor are given to marriage. So basically, when you die, you become an angel. Because we are nothing but angels that is incarcerated in the human flesh. The spirit is an angel that's incarcerated in the human flesh. When you die, that spirit is released from the body. And you become, an celestial, you become a celestial being. So when you die, you actually become an angel. It says they neither marry nor are given into marriage, but they are as the angels of God in heaven. So it so Yahweh Shai, who they call Jesus in Matthew 22, 30, tells you that in the resurrection, when you become a, a, a disembodied person, when you become a spiritual entity, which they call a celestial being, it says they neither marry. Now, what is marriage? We know marriage according to the Bible is sexual intercourse. Nor are given in marriage, but are as angels of God in heaven. So the angels don't marry, man. Angels don't marry. So what the hell the book of Enoch chapter 6 is talking about, man. When they talk about there was angels, that, uh, when, they says, when it says in Enoch 6 that there were certain angels, which were known as the children of heaven, that lusted after the daughters of man and said, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of man and begat children. That's a goddamn lie. That's bullshit. Because the angels don't even marry, man. See, that's why we got to test the spirit to see the spirit is true. Because we showed you in Matthew 22 and 30 in King James Bible, the angels don't marry. So who really was these sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 that saw the daughters of man that they was fair and they took them as wives of all who they chose? Those were nothing but the righteous lineage of self. Some, some righteous man of the bloodline of self had failed. They fell short because they eventually ventured off into marrying the daughters of the lineage of the wicked Cain. And that was the first interracial marriage instituted on the earth in Genesis 6. Genesis 6 is just telling you interracial marriage in a parabolic, metaphorical, dark saying. That's all it's saying. You understand? So the book of Enoch chapter 6 talking about angels and whatnot marrying the daughters of man. That's a damn lie. Then it goes on to say in Enoch chapter 6 in verse 3. It says Simjaza who was their leader said unto them. I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed. And I alone shall have to pay the penalty of this great sin. And they all answered and said let us all swear an oath. And bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this thing. This plan or this thing 
Then they swear all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they all and were all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on Mount on on summit of Mount Hermon. Just because you mix the truth with a lie doesn't mean that it's the actual truth. You're going to find out that the book of Enoch was merged. They mixed the truth with deceit. And that's the most dangerous thing you can do. But they're not smart enough. So I, they're not smart enough for me that I can't pick it up. I'm going to show you every error in this goddamn book that's talking about uh, Enoch is legit. Because first and foremost, it says Semjaja, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed. So basically out of these uh, legions of angels, Semjaja was their leader, right? I'm going to show you how messed up this book of Enoch is because it tells you and in, um, it tells you in Enoch chapter 6, it tells you in Enoch chapter 6 verse 3, Semjaja was the leader. But let's see what it says in Enoch chapter 69. Let's see what it says in Enoch 69. Okay. So let's go to the 69th chapter of Enoch starting with the 4th verse. Uh, Enoch chapter 69 Let's start with the 4th verse Let's see what's really going on Now it talks about It talks about these angels Once again Says the name of the first is Jaquan Now Jaquan Says that is the one who led astray All the sons of God And brought them down To the earth and led them astray Through the daughters of man Now wait a minute Wait a minute. I thought Enoch 6 and 3 said that Semjaja was the leader that led the sons of God astray. But now in the book of Enoch 69 verse 4 it says Jaquan was the one who led all the sons of God and brought them down to earth and led them astray. See that's what I'm talking about. This book is all jacked up. This book is terribly jacked up. This, this book is bogus, man. Why? Because it's contradicted. Brothers and sisters, it's contradicted. As we see in the book of Enoch, chapter 69, it says, Jaquan led astray all the sons of God. But in the book of Enoch 6 and 3, it says, Semjaja led away the sons of God. You see that? You see? Chapter 6, verse 3. Right? It says, in Semjaja, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you would not indeed agree to this deed, and I long have paid a penalty of this great, great sin. So, in, in the book of Enoch 69, verses 4 through 5, it tells you that Jaquan led, led astray the angels. But in the book of Enoch, chapter 6, verse 3, it tells you Semjaja was their leader. You see that? That don't make any goddamn sense. All right? Let's continue on to find some more uh, errors. In this book of Enoch today that many take to be true. Okay. Alright. Let's go on down to chapter 7 brothers and sisters. We are rocking and rolling. Let's go on down to chapter 7. Let's see. It says and all of the others together with them took into their own wives. So they saying that. You see right here. I'm going to show you something. This is very funny. Because supposedly you know all these angels was led by in Genesis 6 and 3. Sam Jaja was the leader of all these angels. As you can see right here, you had um, angels such as these names, you know, all these names, Koki Biel, Tommy L, Raymond L, Daniel L, Ezekiel L. That sound like damn Ezekiel. You understand? Uh, uh, Barak Uel, and uh, all these angels right here. Basically, it's telling you that uh, Book of Enoch chapter 6, Sam Jaja was the leader of all these angels right here. Right, said that he was the leader of all these angels, but then, like I stated, that's kind of funny because in uh, Book of Enoch 69, verses 4 and 5, it said Jaquan was the damn leader. But anyway, let's go to chapter 7, and all these others together with them, talking about all those angels, took, took unto themselves wives which they chose. We already showed you angels don't marry, we already showed you angels don't marry. So supposedly all these, uh, basically Sam Jaja and all these list of angels right here, 
These are the, the chiefs of ten. They took themselves wives and chose, you know, and they began to go into them and defile themselves with them. So they had sex with human women on the earth. But I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something, brothers and sisters. Is that true? Let's use the King James Bible to debunk this once more. It ain't no angels having no sex with daughters of men on the earth, because angels don't have sex. Let me show you something else, brothers and sisters. Let's debunk this. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 39. All flesh is not the same, but there is one kind of flesh of man and another flesh of beasts and another of fishes and another of birds. Check this out. 1 Corinthians 15 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So, what is celestial bodies? Celestial bodies is angelic bodies like angels. What are bodies terrestrial? Terrestrial bodies are humanistic bodies like this that we possess on earth, that the spirit possess. So, there are celestial bodies, which are angels, star bodies, uh, what you would call fourth dimensional bodies, and there are bodies terrestrial, which are humanistic bodies like these that we possess on earth. It tells you that the glory of the celestial is one so there's a glory of the celestial what is the glory of the celestial bodies the glory of the celestial bodies is infinite power and what is the glory of the terrestrial bodies the glory of the terrestrial bodies is sex that's the glory of the terrestrial body that's the glory of the humanistic bodies that's the glory of man and woman the glory of the terrestrial which is humanistic bodies is sex but what is the glory of the celestial bodies what is the glory of the celestial bodies Infinite power, man. So let's go on. Because it said the glory of the terrestrial is another. And what is the glory of the terrestrial of the man and woman? Sex. Let me show you. First Corinthians 11 and 7. For a man indeed art not to cover his head. For as he is the image in the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. So the woman is the glory of the man. And that's First Corinthians 11 and 7. And... 1 Corinthians 11 and 7, that goes back to uh, the glory, the glory of the terrestrial. Um, let's see. That goes back to the, the, glory of, the glory of the terrestrial, which is the glory of the human, the humanistic body, which is the glory of man, the glory of woman. The glory of the terrestrial is another. And what's the glory of the terrestrial? Sex. Because we showed you. It says in 1 Corinthians 11 and 7. It says, but the woman is the glory of man. Because every man is our woman, a true woman. And they desire sex. You see? So the glory of the terrestrial is one. And the glory of the celestial is the other. The glory of the terrestrial is the woman, which is the glory of the man. That's sex. But what, but what is the glory of the celestial? Infinite power. So the glory of the celestial is infinite power. The glory of the celestial is infinite power. The glory of the celestial is not, once again, sex. The glory of the celestial is infinite power. So it wasn't no angels having sex with the daughters of man because angels don't have a carnal, a carnal mentality like that. Okay? Angels can't sin, man. Alright? So when you go in Jude and say the angels that sin, that's a metaphorical phrase, man. A figurative phrase talking about the sons of God, which are the Sephites. Let's go back into the book of Enoch. So I wanted to say that because the chapter 7 in the book of Enoch Tell you that all these angels came and had sex with wives. You see that? And it says that um, they defiled themselves with them and they taught them charms and enchantments and cutting the roots and made them acquainted with plants. You know, put basically put mankind on things they didn't know. And listen, listen up. It says, and they became pregnant and they bare great giants. Whose height was 3,000 L's. You know how much 3,000 L's is brothers and sisters. 
That's 450 feet tall. 3,000 L's is 450 feet tall. You really believe that there are men on the earth that damn tall, man? Man, you niggas got to be some fucking idiots, man. Excuse my French, but it's the truth. Ain't no man on earth 3,000 L's. That's 450 feet tall. Even when you go into the Bible, brothers and sisters, when you go into the King James Bible right here, the King James Bible, there was not one man over 10 feet tall. Goliath was 9'9". Nine, nine. But you want me to believe man back then was 3,000 L's? You know, how, you know how tall 450 feet is, which is 3,000 L's, concerning Enoch chapter 7, verse 3, that supposedly these giants were 3,000 L's that these supposedly fallen angels brought forth. 3,000 L's, 450 feet tall. Let me show you how tall that is. All right, Louisiana State Capitol Building. Hope you guys can see this. I really hope you guys can see this. Louisiana State Capitol Building. Okay, has 34 floors. The height is 449. 460 to the tip. And as you can see, you might as well say this is 450 feet tall. That's the, that's the Louisiana State Capitol. 450 feet tall, man. I want you to see it, brothers and sisters. 450 feet tall. This is 450 feet tall. Imagine just a human being standing before that building. You actually believe that giants was that damn tall, man? That was not even in your Bible. That's not even a, a giant that's over 10 feet tall. What the hell ain't they talking about, man? See, that's the type of madness that I'm telling you about. Brothers and sisters, so when you read about the book of Enoch, and you come across in the book of Enoch chapter 7, it talks about giants whose height was 3,000 L's, which is 450 feet tall. I'm showing you how tall that is, man. I'm showing you how tall that is. The Louisiana um, State Capitol building is 450 feet tall. That was not, no, this is not correct. This is not true. Brothers and sisters, there was no one on the earth that tall. Goliath wasn't even that damn tall. You understand? So we have to test the spirits concerning the King James Bible to see if it's lining up with this false as modern book of Enoch today, which is not the same book that Jude quoted from. Once again. Alright? It goes on to say in the book of Enoch, it goes on to say in the book of Enoch, to chapter 8, we just picking out all the errors. And Azazel taught man to make swords. That's a contradiction. Because it said Azazel taught man to make swords and knives. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this goddamn lie that this book of Enoch today is pushing. And Azazel taught man to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates. And made known to them metals of the earth and the art of working, working them. Bracelets, ornaments, and the use of um, antimony. Okay, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm pointing out in chapter 8 of the book of Enoch, it says Azazel taught man to make swords and knives. Is that true? No, that's a goddamn lie as well. Why do we say that? Let's see who taught man how to make swords and knives. Let's go into the King James Version. And once again, let's test the spirit. Now let's go into Genesis 4 and 19. Let's go in Genesis 4 and 19. Genesis 4 and 19. Genesis 4 and 18. In Enoch. Now that's not the same Enoch here. Supposedly the book of Enoch. That's not the righteous Enoch through the bloodline itself. Okay. This Enoch, however, in Genesis 4 and 18, is the Enoch, the descendant of Cain, that wicked one that slew his brother Abel. It says Enoch was born Arad. And Arad begat Mahayel, and Mahayel begat Methusiel, and Methusiel begat Lamech. All these are the descendants of Cain, that wicked one. Genesis 4 and 19. And Lamech took and took him two wives, because Lamech was the first progenitor. I mean, not the first progenitor, but Salah, the first, uh, the first polygamist of the earth. He took two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. But what they don't tell you here, brothers and sisters, 
Lamech, two wives, Ada and Zella was the descendants of Seth. Ada and Zella was the descendants of Seth. So you had Lamech, the wicked line of Cain, that married into their righteous line of Seth. And Ada and Zella was the descendants of Seth. Because Ada and Zella was the daughters of, I believe, Enos. All right. Which Enos was the descendant of Seth, that righteous bloodline, which had two daughters, Ada and Ada and Zilla. So Ada and Zilla was righteous uh, daughters of Seth, which married wicked uh, lineage of Cain. So that's interracial marriage there. But anyway, that's another lesson within itself. Let's get to what we're talking about. It says, And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Now it goes on to say in Genesis. Um, 4 and 19, as you can see, it says, And Lamech took unto him two wives, and the name was Ada, and Ada, and the other name was Zilla. It says, And Ada bowed Jabal, right? Ada bowed Jabal, right? It says, And he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and as such that have cattle. Now, watch this Genesis 4 21. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. Watch this Genesis 4 22, and Zilla. She also bare Tubu Cain. Now, this is what we're finna look at. Tubu Cain. Tubu Cain was an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubu Cain was Nahama. So it says Tubu Cain was an instructor of, a instructor of every, every artificer in brass and iron. Let's go to the concordance in Genesis 4.22 and see what that means. Tubu Cain, right here, he was an instructor of artificial, uh, art, uh, artificial, what that is, in Hebrew 2794. Let's see what that is. A metal craftsman. So Tubal Cain was an artificial, what that means, a metal craftsman. Go on down. A metal craftsman. It says, cutting, fabricating, hence cutting instrument, edge tools. Basically, a craftsman for making metal. He was a metal craftsman, as you can see. That's what that means. An artificer. That means a metal craftsman. Craftsman. A, someone who makes instruments of metal. So Tubal King was an instructor of metal craftsmen. He made different type of uh, instruments of brass and iron. So he made weapons, so to speak. So it tells you in Genesis 4 and 22. That Tubal Cain was an instructor of, of every artificial and brass and iron. He was the first metal craftsman that made instruments of metal. But what they tell you in this phony ass book of Enoch today, they tell you in the chapter 8, chapter 8, that Azazel taught man to make swords and knives. You see that bull? So there you go again. The book of Enoch is wrong. Using the King James Bible to tear down these strongholds of false philosophy in the sea. As you can see, man. Okay, let's move on. Now, in the book of Enoch, chapter 8, they talk about this certain angel named Azazel, right? Azazel. What is Azazel? Let's find out what is Azazel. Okay, let's pull, pull out the book of Enoch for a minute. And let's go into the King James Bible to find out what the hell is Azazel. Because supposedly to the book of Enoch, that's an angel. Let's find out. Leviticus 16 and 6. Let's find out if it's a Zazel or a damn angel or what. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Leviticus 16, 7. He shall take the two goats and present, present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Leviticus 16 and 8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. One, one lot for the Lord. And the other lot for the scapegoat. Now let's look at scapegoat in Leviticus 16 and 8. And let's see what that says. Scapegoat. Let's look at the Hebrew for scapegoat in Leviticus 16 and 8. Scapegoat. Right? Scapegoat in Leviticus 16 and 8. It says. Let's see. Brothers and sisters. Leviticus 16 and 8. It says, Azazel. Scapegoat is Azazel. So Azazel ain't no goddamn angel. Azazel goes back to a scapegoat, man. 
Hebrew 57 and 99. Look it up in the concordance for yourselves. Right? It says, as Azazel, okay? Azazel. 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 Okay? That's I. I. Azazel. Azazel. Okay? And it says, right? The entire removal. And it says, scapegoat. Refers to the goat used for sacrifice for sins of the people. So what? So that's a goddamn goat, man. Azazel's a goat in the Hebrew fifty-seven ninety-nine. Azazel. So what the hell is this in the Book of Enoch, chapter eight, talking about a certain angel named Azazel taught man to make swords and knives? That's a damn goat. Look like somebody made this up, man. You see what I'm saying? Many errors in this book of Enoch, but you take this book to be true today, brothers and sisters. Many errors, man. Let's continue on. In the book of Enoch, going to the tenth chapter. Right? Going to the tenth chapter. Alright, we're gonna look at the tenth chapter. And we're gonna look at verse 8. And it says, Watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works of through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. So you see in the book of Enoch 10 and verse 8, beginning with verse 8, it tells you that the watchers, which is supposed to the fallen angels, have disclosed and have taught their sons, and the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. To him ascribe all sin. So basically they saying that. The whole, the whole, the whole earth was corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, and to him ascribed all sin. So all sin came through Azazel. That's what they basically trying to say. Is that so? Let's look at Romans five and twelve. Romans five and twelve in the King James. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for for that all have sinned. You see that? So what that's telling you? Adam ascribed to all sin. It was through Adam's downfall that sin came into the earth. Not no goddamn Azazel in the book of Enoch, chapter 10, beginning with verse 8. Because they will have you to believe that it says the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel. And to him ascribe all sin. Is that so? I thought through Adam's fall. I thought through Adam's fall the whole earth was corrupted. Pursuant to Romans 5 and 12. As by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men that have sinned. You see? So it was through Adam downfall. Adam ascribed to all sin. But your false ass book of Enoch today. That many of you take to be true. Tells you in the 10th chapter. Beginning with verse 8. That who ascribed to all sin. And why sin who was responsible for sin in the earth? It tells you that Azazel to him ascribe all sin. So you mean to tell me the entire earth was corrupted through Azazel? Or the entire earth was corrupted through the uh, the fall of Adam in, in Romans 5 and 12? Was Azazel responsible for all the sins? Was Azazel responsible for all the sins on the earth? Or was it Adam, man? Huh? That's what I'm telling you, man. So, brothers and sisters, if you don't see it, then I don't know what to say, man. All sin is a result of what happened in the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden of Eden, we know what happened between Adam and Eve, man. They want you to believe that, man. That Azazel was responsible for all sin. That's what the book of Enoch says. But let me show you how jacked up and screwed up this book of Enoch. Because they tell you in the 10th chapter, verse 8, that Azazel, to him ascribed all sin, that it was it was through Azazel that the whole earth was corrupted, and through the words that was taught by Azazel, to him ascribed all sin. He showed you that Azazel mean a damn scapegoat anyway, but it says to him ascribe all sin. But then in, in chapter 98, 4 in the book of Enoch, it says something else. Let me show you that. So we don't head it over to chapter 98 in the book of Enoch, 
And it said through Isaiah's scribe dog saying basically the earth became all messed up because of him. Now we in chapter, we got to go to down to chapter 98 verse 4 to see if that's correct. To see if this could con contradict it. Chapter 98 4. Watch this. Chapter 98 4 in your book of Enoch. It says. I have sworn unto you, you sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave. And a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman. Even so, sin has not been sent upon the earth. But what's, what it says in 98.4 of the book of Enoch. But man of himself has created it. And under a great curse shall they fall who commit it. So in Enoch 98.4, it tells you that man himself created it. Man himself created sin. And under a great curse shall they fall and commit it. But it tells you. And uh, the big book of Enoch 10 and 8, that it says the whole earth have been corrupted through the works of Azazel. And to him ascribed all sin. But in the book of uh, Enoch 98 verse 4 says, but man himself has created it. You see that? You see how fucked up this book is? Excuse my French, man, but I'm angry right now because many of you get sucked in by this book, man. 98.4 in the book of Enoch tells you that man himself has created sin. But then it tells you differently in the book of Enoch chapter 10 verse 8. It tells you that Azazel was responsible for it. 10 and 8. Watch us out disclose and taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel and to him ascribe all sin. But then 98.4 of the book of Enoch tells you it was man's fault why he brought sin in the earth. Which one, man? Which one? You see that? Let's move on. Let's look at 19 chapter in the book of Enoch. Because you're not going to believe this one. 19 chapter in your book of Enoch. Going down to the 19 chapter, we're just showing you that this book is not the same book Jude quoted from in his time. 19 chapter, let's go up. And uh, we're going to begin with uh, verse 2. We'll just read all this, 19 chapter. And Uriel, supposedly an angel, said to me, Here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women, and their spirits assuming many different forms and defiling mankind, and shall lead them astray to sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand to the day of the great judgment. So supposedly these angels was put into some type of abyss. All right, it says, which they shall be judged, which they shall be judged till they are made of the end of, and the woman also of the angels. So suppose that these women that partook in this, the woman who went astray shall become sirens. You see that? So in the book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 2, it tells you that woman, certain women, also of those angels that went astray with those angels, they became sirens. Now, what is a siren? This is your book of Enoch 19 verse 2. It said that certain women that partook in what these angels did, they became sirens. Now, what is a siren? Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Google and let's just type in siren. Now, we went to Google and we typed in siren because according to the book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 3, certain women that partook in the fallen angel activity, these women also of the angels who went astray became sirens, as you can see. Now, what the hell is a siren? We are in siren now. You see that? It says siren. Now, what does that say? It says in Greek mythology. This is Greek mythology, man. So this goddamn book of Enoch is talking about goddamn Greek mythology, man. You understand those are sirens. Supposedly the ain't supposedly the woman that partook in this activity with the fallen angels, the most I you know, took away their legs because they indulged supposedly the according to the book of Enoch, the fallen angels was coming down, popping um, the daughters of men. They was opening their legs, giving it to these fallen angels. So the most I cursed the woman to keep the woman from opening their legs and having sex with uh the, the more fallen angels, he turned their legs into fish tails, man. It says Greek mythology. This is Greek mythology. It says the sirens were dangerous creatures who lured who lured 
nearby sailors with their enchanting music and voices to shipwreck on the rocky coast of their island. Roman popes placed them on some small islands called uh, Serunum Scopoli, if I'm saying that right. So where does this siren shit come from? It says this is Greek mythology. That's not, that's not, um, um, that's not non-fiction. That's fictional. That's Greek mythology. Similar creatures, mermaids. Basically, that's what that is. A goddamn mermaid, man. You see that? Let's click into it. You see that? You see that? A siren. Supposedly, these women that partook in this activity with these fallen angels are having sex. They saying, the book saying, that the Most High cursed these women. The Most High cursed these women and took away their legs to keep them from having sex with the supposedly fallen angels. And they became sirens. That's what your damn book of Enoch says, man. In the 19th chapter. 19th chapter, verse 3. It says that... Uh, I meant verse 2 in 19th chapter. It says, uh, verse 3, I believe, When the strays shall become sirens. It says, Women also, women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. And I, Enoch, alone saw the vision, the ends of all things, and no man shall see as I have seen. Get the fuck out of here with that, man. You understand? There was, you know, because that's that's impossible, man. The book of Enoch speaks about 19, chapter 19, verse 3, about women becoming sirens, man. We showed you what that is. Women becoming sirens, look at that. That's what the book of Enoch speaks of. Women becoming sirens. And what is that? This is nothing but Greek mythology mythology is not real it's fables let's see what the bible had to say about that let's go into the king james let's go second peter 1 and 16 because supposedly your book of enoch is talking about goddamn mermaids greek mythology that's what your book of enoch is talking about this right here man talking about woman women look and I'm going to tell you, they weren't even no white woman in the beginning of time, man. Because the Edomites came after Genesis, the 25th chapter. You understand? But it's talking about, this is how women end up looking because the most out cursed woman for having sex with fallen angels. And they start looking like that, man. Is that correct? Because this is Greek mythology. Is that correct? Second Peter's. Uh, 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunning, cunningly devised fables. This is nothing but a cunningly devised fable because it's Greek mythology. We already showed you, man. Second Peter 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord, Amashat Yahushai, who they call Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So, for we have not followed cunning devised fables. We don't follow no cunning devised fables, which is Greek mythology. So, this book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 3, talks about women that became angels. I meant women that, that indulged with supposedly fallen angels who had sex with fallen angels was cursed and, and became sirens, man. What does the Bible say about that? That's known as a cunning Levi's fable, which we are not to follow. So we burn this goddamn book. Get rid of it, man. Because after this lesson, I think that's what I'm going <laughs> to I think that's what I'm going to do, man. You understand? That's the only reason why I got the book. To show the lies up in it. See? So we don't fall out the cunning Levi's fable. Let me give you uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 4. 1 Timothy 1 and 4. Neither give heed to fables. Once again, what is this? Fable. Ain't no woman on earth ever did that. Ain't no woman on earth ever became cursed to go through such. Ain't no woman on earth ever was found like that, man. That's Greek mythology. I'm showing you what it is. That's Greek mythology. Sirens 
uh, sirens are Greek mythology. Greek mythology. Sirens. Do we look like goddamn Greeks? The Greeks are Edomites, man. We are the children of Israel. Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. We the chosen seed. Do we look like goddamn Greeks? Edomites. Even the Romans believed that bull. But your book of Enoch tells you that woman became this for having sex with fallen angels. And that's mermaids. What the Bible says about that. Don't give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is, the, which is in the faith. So we basically, we about godly edifying. Giving you the truth of this Bible. We're not about giving heed to no cunning and devised fables which have endless genealogies like Greek mythology does. But then, however, you go and read the book of Enoch thinking that that's godly structure. And it talks about women, also of the angels who went astray and became some goddamn sirens. In the book of Enoch, chapter 19, verse 3. You got to be out of your damn mind, man. We rebuke this damn book, man. Okay? That's a fable, man. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4 and 4. First Timothy 4 and 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. I think that's the wrong scripture. Wait a minute. 1 Timothy, uh, let me see. 4 and 4. Wait a minute. So lock is 2 Timothy 4 and 4. It says, and they shall be turned. Let's say, let's go right here. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. Let's start right here. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Because the time will come when people start venturing off from the Bible and start going in several other books, man, taking these books to be true. Like the book of Enoch, right? So the time will come, brothers and sisters, you know, where they will not endure sound doctrine. They will not believe in what the Bible says. They will not use precept upon precept to get their, their understanding. But, but after their own lust, Shall they heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears? 2 Timothy 4 and 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned into fables. Okay, and that's what some Israelite camps have did. They have turned their ears from the truth to be turned into fables because they love reading about this sci-fi shit. They love reading about Enoch. That's not the correct Enoch that Jude quoted from. And they like reading about women being turned into sirens and shit. They love Greek mythology. They love fictional stuff, man. They rather believe this than uh, the stick with the Bible. They rather believe such things like that. That's what your book of Enoch talks about. Yeah, that's what your book of Enoch talks about. Okay. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, this can't be true. Supposedly, the most I curse the woman for indulging in sexual practices with supposedly fallen angels and took away their legs so they wouldn't bust their legs open. To get their vagina puffed. So he turned their legs into fishtails to keep them from opening their coochie up. That ain't true. There's no such thing as half human, half beast. Why? Because we have to rely on what the scripture says. What the scripture says, 1 Corinthians 15, 39. It literally tells you that all flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. Right? All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of man, and there is another flesh of beasts. So man and beast merge together. This ain't true. This goddamn mythology. This is fiction. Because there's no such thing as this, because there's different kinds of flesh. It says all flesh is not the same. But there is one kind of flesh of man, another kind of flesh of beast, and another, and another flesh of fish and birds. So there ain't no such thing as splicing, man. Definitely like not human beings with animals because all flesh is not the same, brothers and sisters. And this is Corinthians 1539. You got one flesh which pertain to fish and you got one flesh which, uh, which pertain to men. But fish and man are not spliced and merged like you see this bullshit right here. Not so, man. We're going with the scriptures. We're testing the spirit to see if the spirit is true. Your book of Enoch is a goddamn lie, man. Okay? Let's keep going on. Now we're going to chapter 22 in the book of Enoch. Picking out all these corruptible verses. Chapter 22. Chapter 
chapter 22 chapter 22 speaks about basically paradise and it talks about how you have the righteous man separated from the wicked man basically if you're a righteous man when you die if you're a righteous man when you die you go to uh, a place of paradise if you're a wicked man when you die you go to Hades and, and the righteous the wicked righteous and the wicked ones are totally separate that's a damn lie because all go to, to the same place and I'm gonna show you let's start with uh, 22 and let's start with verse 5 I guess all right 22 and verse 5 and his voice went forth to heaven and made soup so let's start with verse 4 simmer there in yet Yet that all the souls of the children of man shall assemble here. So let's start with verse 1 and get clear understanding of the 22 of the book of Enoch. And thence I went to another place, and he, and he, and he, and, and he mounted in, in of a hard rock, and there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places and deep and dark to look at? Then Raphael, Raphael is is actually an angel so that's true Raphael answered one of the holy angels which was a holy angel who was with me he said unto me these holy places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein yet that all the souls of the children of man should assemble here and these places have been made to receive them to the day of their judgment and to their appointed period and to the period appointed Till the great judgment comes upon them. Ain't nobody waiting in no earth for a point in time of judgment. Basically, if you know about regeneration or reincarnation, when you die, your spirit returns back to the Most High. You rest in the spirit realm three or four generations, and um, according to the sentences that, according to the sentence, well, you can say the verdict, the verdict that was given to you in the spirit world, uh, the 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 penalty that was given to you in the spirit world, you will play out that sentence upon the earth when you come back three or four generations. That's how it is for those. Who can understand regeneration or reincarnation? I'm not talking about the ones that don't know about regeneration or reincarnation. They want to believe that you die and you go into the goddamn ground and you held there. You understand? But anyways, it says, I saw the spirit of the dead man walking. So Enoch said he saw the spirit of a certain dead man that was walking. And his voice went forth to, to heaven and made suit. And I asked Raphael, Enoch asked Raphael, the angel, who was with me? And I said unto him, This spirit which make it suit, who is it? Whose voice goes forth and make it suit to the heavens? And guess supposedly Raphael answered and said, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. And he made suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth. And his seed is annihilated from among the seed of a man. And I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places, Why is one separated? one from another and he answered me and said these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated so supposedly the spirits of the dead is separated that's what i'm trying to get to supposedly the spirit of the dead is separated one from another righteous ones are separated from the, the wicked ones and righteous ones is in some holding place on one side and wicked ones is in some holding place on one side you know and it goes on to say but we're going to prove that that's a damn lie. And such a division has been made, made for the spirits of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth. And judge has not been executed on them in their lifetime. So you can see right here according to Enoch 22, chapter 22. Basically there supposedly supposed to be a division for spirits of the righteous. And that's supposed to be... Uh, and for sinners, as you can see, that's what Enoch asks. Why is one separated one from another? And he answered and said unto me, These have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated in a division, as you can see. You know, so supposedly there is a separation. If you're a wicked ass person, you go to a holding location in paradise, and if you're a righteous person, you go to a righteous location and they separate and the wicked on one side righteous on one side that's a goddamn lie let me show you let me show you something let me show you that's a lie let's go to the king james let's go to ecclesiastes the, the tether on this lie
concerning this false ass book of Enoch to show you that all wicked man and woman go to the same place. This is where your judgment take place, brothers and sisters. You play your judgment on, on earth. You come back in the reincarnation to play your judgment out on earth. Everything that you're doing right now in this lifetime determines your next life. To live a better life, you got to straighten this life out. You got to undo your karma. Because the things and the decisions that you make in this life determines your next life. Because you're going to be judged when you die. You're going to go back to the heavenly father. He's going to judge you according to this life you live. If you don't meet up to his standards, you're coming back in the next life. You understand the paper, all the things you did in this life. And you can be brought back with, you can be brought back with AIDS. You can be brought back with a hole in your heart. You can be brought back with a cancer. You can be brought back with brain tumor. You can be brought back as a poor man. You can be brought back as, uh, you know, as, as, as dealing with asthma. You can be brought back in many other, in many different diverse situations, man. So that's what it's talking about. And I'm going to show you where you play your judgment out. Because the book of Enoch, according to the book of Enoch, you go to a certain place where the wicked and the righteous is, is, is held in two different dimensions. Now, man, let me show you all go to the same place. Ezekiel 3 and 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Under the sun is on the earth. That's where you play your judgment out. The wickedness, that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. So this is the place of judgment, the earth, which is, which is really hell, man. Ecclesiastes 3 and 17, I, I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. So God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time, therefore, every purpose of, for every work. So God going to judge the righteous and the wicked, right? Ecclesiastes 3 and 18, let's see if they separated like the book of Enoch tells you in chapter 22, right? Let's see if they separated. Please ask the 3 and 18. I said in my heart concerning the estates of the sons of man that God might make manifest them and that they might see that themselves are beasts. Please ask the 3 and 19. For that which befallen the sons of man befallen the beasts. Even one thing befallen them as the one as, as the one died, so died the other. Yeah, they all have one breath, so that the man have no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. So when you die. It tells you that the sons of man befall the beast, even one thing befalleth them, as the one died, so died the other. Just like a beast died, man died, just like a beast. Yeah, they all they all one breath. Beasts and man, they all have one breath. So that the man have no base better gain say above the beast for all his vanity. So just like a damn animal drop dead, you drop dead too. But when you drop dead, where we go? We go to the spirit world. Now, let's see if we separate it in the spirit world like the book of Enoch chapter 22 states. No, it says, all go to one place. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again and all go to one place. And that's the spirit world. Please add the 3 of 21. Who know the spirit of man that goes upward and the spirit of beast that goes downward to the earth? The spirit of man that goes upward and the spirit of beast that goes downward, it said they all go to one place. Whether you wicked or whether you good, you go to all one place. See? The wickedness was there on, on earth and the righteousness was there. So a wicked ass man or a righteous man, when you die, you all go to one place. Whereas the book of Enoch, this phony ass book, in the 22nd chapter tell you that People are separated one from another. You got sinners over here and righteous people over there. Bunch of bullshit. The book of Enoch. Let's go to 65. We don't went over this. We don't need to go over that right there. Let's go to the book of Enoch chapter 65. Chapter 65. Okay. Let's prove all things, brothers and sisters. Let's prove all things. Show you that this is a false book. 65, and let's start with verse 1. Now, this is talking about Noah that was comfort. Okay, 65, verse 1. In those days, Noah saw the earth that it had sunk down, and its destruction was nigh. And he rose. Okay, I hope you can see it, brothers and sisters, because I have to try to blow it up so you can see it, but I hope you can see it. This is 65, verse 1 in the book of Enoch. So, Noah saw that the uh, the earth had sunk down in destruction and that and destruction was nigh because the Mosai was getting ready to destroy the earth with water and he rose 
he rose from thence and went to the ends of the earth. So supposedly, according to the book of Enoch, there are three chasms at the end of the earth, north, south, east, and west. Three holes that open up during certain seasons at the end of the earth, which is known as chasms. And um, w once these chasms open, the book of Enoch claims that the Garden of Eden was inside the earth too, man. That's crazy. That's what the book of Enoch states. The Garden of Eden is inside the earth, which is located at the North Chasm. So supposedly Enoch, you know, uh, when Enoch had died, to be comfort, Noah went to the ends of the earth, northward, I guess, and he cried out because the ends of the earth, he went to the ends of the earth to an opening chasm, which is a gigantic, they call them like, uh, they call these, uh, they call these, what they call, they call them like chasms. And you have like 12 chasms, according to the book of Enoch, which is three chasms on each end of the earth, north, south, east, and west. And um, they are opened up every so often concerning the seasons. And actually, the book of Enoch states that the north chasm, once that hole opens up, you can see the Garden of Eden in the inside of the earth. That's a bunch of bull. But anyway, this is where Enoch, this is where Noah went to the ends of the earth and cried out to his grandfather Enoch because Enoch, Enoch was gone. Okay, Enoch was gone. He wasn't present on earth. So Noah went to the ends of the earth and cried out to his grandfather Enoch. After Enoch, Enoch, Enoch is not no longer present on the earth. Keep in mind that um, Enoch, Enoch is not present here. All right. It says, and Noah said, okay, I want to show you, I want y'all to see this. And Noah said three times with an embittering voice, hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, tell me what is, and I said unto him, Noah asking his great grandfather Enoch, because Enoch died, man, if you didn't know that. That's another lesson within itself. Look at SFIA, Enoch saw death. SFIA, Enoch saw death. And that explained that Enoch died. Enoch died, man. Enoch wasn't taken away. He was taken away, but taken away in reference to the most I put him to death. He died. Just look at SFIA, Enoch saw death on my videos. See what I'm talking about. So Enoch died, right? Some say he was taken away, however you refer, but we know he left. So with Enoch being gone, Noah wanted to be comfort, comfort. So he went to the ends of the earth and cried out loud to his grandfather Enoch. Now, is that not a capital offense? Because the Bible tells you not to consult the dead. But he, here Noah goes to the end of the earth and cried loud to his grandfather Enoch. And he did how many times? Noah said three times. He said with an embitterment voice, hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, he says, tell me what is that is falling out on the earth and that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken. Least perchance I shall perish with it. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth and a voice was heard from heaven that's kind of crazy because St. John 3 and 13 tell you no man is sent to the heavens and I fell on my face that's what Noah said and Enoch my grandfather came and stood by me and said unto me why hast thou cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping and command and a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the angels and all the violence of the, of the satans and all their powers. So to make a long story short, you know, the earth during those times was on the verge of being destroyed. Noah had questions. So Noah wanted to ask his great grandfather what was really going on. So he went to the ends of the earth cried out aloud to his great-grandfather Enoch after he was dead. What does the Bible say about that? Are you, supposed to, are, you, are you supposed to consult the dead like Noah did when he went to the ends of the earth to cry out for his great-grandfather great Enoch? He, he, he cried out to his grandfather Enoch. Are you supposed to consult the dead? Let's see what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 18.10 there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or use it divination, or an observer, observer, or times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Deuteronomy 18, 11, or a charmer, 
or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. You see that? So it says that we, as the children of Israel, we are not to do this. It says we, they're, 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 they're not supposed to be charmers or consulters with familiar spirits. Now, what is consulter? What is that? Consulter. 7592 in the Hebrew. Sha'al. That means consulter. It says to ask, to inquire. To inquire, to ask for. To ask. So, uh, a consulter is when you ask. So, a consulter asks for familiar spirits. Now, what is familiar spirits? That's invoking the dead, man. That's what a consultant does. He asks for familiar spirits. Okay? Dead family members. Familiar spirits. 178 in Hebrew. He asks for uh, familiar spirits. Now, what is that? Necromancer. A necromancer is one who invokes the dead. Okay? Go spirit of the dead one. Practice necromancy. He invokes the dead. He calls up ones from the dead. As you can see right there. That's what familiar spirits. A consulter is one who acts for spirits of the dead. And, and concerning Deuteronomy 18.11, we don't supposed to do that. Because Deuteronomy 18.10 says, that should not be found among you. Okay? A consulter with familiar spirits. A wizard or a necromancer. A necromancer is someone who invokes the dead. So they got necromancy in the book of Enoch, chapter 65, because Noah went to the ends of the earth to cry out to his grandfather Enoch that was gone from the earth. So that's necromancy. That's consulting a familiar spirit, man. And you know what? Uh, 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 pursuing the first Chronicles 10 and 13, you know that caused Saul his life, man. That caused Saul his life. Okay, we'll show you that. But it's okay for Noah to do it? Come on, man. 1 Chronicles 10 and 13. So Saul died for his transgression. Now what was the transgression of Saul? Which he had committed against the Lord Yahweh, even against the word of the Lord Yahweh, which kept not, which he kept not, also for, for asking counsel. Of one that had familiar spirit to the to inquire of it. So that's why Saul got put to death. Because he consulted familiar spirits. He invoked the dead. You know the story about Saul that went to seek out the uh the prophet Samuel to call him up after he had died to see what he went to war concerning the Israelites and the Philistines. And that's why he died, man. Because what caused Saul his life was consulting familiar spirits. But in the book of Enoch. Chapter 65, oh, I guess it's okay for Noah, for Noah to go to the ends of the earth and to scream out and, and cry out to his grandfather, Enoch. Man. Book of Enoch. Book of Enoch 67. The book of Enoch 67. And let's take a look at one. Because this is talking about the judgment of the flood. And in those days, the word of God came unto me, and he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me. A lot without blame, a lot of love and uprighteousness. And now the angels are making a wooden building. You see that? In Enoch, the 67th chapter, it tells you that the angels are making a goddamn wooden building. What is this talking about? They telling you that the angels made, the angels were the one that constructed the ark. No, that ain't what the King James Bible said. Because the King James Bible tells you that the angels didn't make no ark. The King James Bible said that Noah and his sons constructed the ark. So it says, and now the angels are making a wooden building. That's what it says. And when they have completed the task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. And there shall come forth from it the seed of life. And a chain shall set, and a, and a chain shall set so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant. So let chapter 67 of Enoch tell you that it was angels that made the ark. 
And Noah didn't do a damn thing, man. That's what the book of Enoch tell you in 67. Chapter 2. Enoch 67 to 2 tell you angels made the damn ark. That ain't what the King James Bible say. Let's see what the Bible says. Genesis 6 and 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh. Wait a minute. Genesis 6 and 13. And God said unto Noah, he said, the end of all flesh is coming for me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them off the earth. Now let's see what the most I told Noah. He didn't tell nothing. He didn't tell no damn uh, angels to do this. Make thee, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Right? It says, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of the length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits. A cubit is eighteen inches. Three hundred cubits. The breadth of it fifty cubits. And the height of it, 30 cubits. Genesis 16, 6. I mean, Genesis 6 and 16. And the window shall thou make to the ark in a cubit, shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower second and third stories, shall thou make it. Okay? With lower second and third stories, shall thou make it. Right? Genesis 6 and 17. And behold, I even, I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Genesis 6 and 18, but, I, but with thee I will establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark and thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee, which is eight people in all. So according to Genesis 6 and 13, God told Noah, the end of all flesh is coming for me, for the earth is filled with violence. And he would destroy them. And he told Noah, Genesis 6 and 14, to make the ark. Well, your book of Enoch in chapter 67, the damn book of Enoch tells you that 67, verse 2 in the book of Enoch, tells you that angels are making a wooden building. Wow, brothers and sisters. See that? But you want to keep following the book of Enoch, man. Go ahead. I don't. I don't warn you. You know it's so many. It's so many grammatical errors in this book, man. It's sad. I'll be here all day. I gotta make an end to this video because there's so many errors in this book. Let's go to uh, chapter sixty-nine. Chapter sixty-nine. There's so many arrows in this book of Enoch, chapter 69. And let's look at chapter 69 and uh, 6. Chapter 69 right here. And let's look at verse 6. All right. Um, let's start with verse 6. Oh, if I can find it. Their bodies with daughters of man. It's talking about the angels, supposedly fallen angels that defiled. Let's see. Let's start right here. The sons of God. Let's start right there. The sons of God brought them down to the earth and led them astray through the daughters of man. And the second was named Asbiel. He imparted to the holy sons of God evil counsel and led them astray. So they defiled their bodies with the daughters of man. Talking supposedly about these fallen angels, which were none other than the Sethites. And the third was named Gadriel. Gadriel. The third name was Gadriel. He, he, he it is who showed the children of man all the blows of death. And he led astray Eve. So it says Gadriel in the 69th chapter of the book of Enoch. It says Gadriel led a straight Eve. Wait a minute. It says in the 69th chapter of the book of Enoch, Gadriel led a straight Eve. What in the fuck? Gadriel led a straight Eve. Wait a minute. How can that be? When according to the book of Enoch, the fallen angels was not around during the time of Adam and Eve. 
But it says Gadriel led away Eve in the 69th chapter. How is that? When these fallen angels were not around the time of Adam and Eve. But Gadriel led away Eve. This wicked angel supposedly, Gadriel led astray Eve. That ain't what the Bible say. Gadriel didn't lead, no, lead astray Eve. That ain't what the Bible say. Because Adam and Eve was wrong before these damn fallen angels supposedly came to the earth. So Gadriel didn't leave Eve astray. Let's see what the King James say who led Eve astray. Let's go to the third chapter of Genesis. To rebuke this demonic ass book, man. Let's see who led Eve astray. Genesis third chapter, verse three. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, the serpent said to the woman, yeah, if God said you shall not eat of every tree in the garden, Blah, 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 blah. We already know about Genesis 3. Let's skip down to 4 first. Genesis 3 and 4. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Right? So eventually Genesis 3 and 6 said the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. She and, and, um, and, and, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also her husband with her. And he did eat. And then it, and it tells you eventually... That uh, in Genesis 3 and 12, and the man said, The woman who thou gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. You see that? Genesis 3 and 13, and the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said that the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So she said that the serpent beguiled her. The serpent led her astray in Genesis 3 and 13. It wasn't no goddamn Gadriel. Because in the 69th chapter of the book of Enoch, it tells you Gadriel led Eve astray. Don't you see that? This book is done. It's finished. The serpent beguiled Eve, man. Not Gadriel. Because he, he wasn't even wrong. If Gadriel even exists, he wasn't even wrong during the time of Adam and Eve. Fallen angels supposedly came, if it's true. It, which is not, came in Genesis chapter 6, way after Adam and Eve. So how in the hell that Gadriel led Eve astray? Okay. I'm going to show you one more error in this book of Enoch, man. And I got I to gotta end this lesson. I got to. I got to, brothers and sisters, because I'm going to be here, and this lesson going to be like two hours and some change. It's probably like one of the longest lessons I did concerning this false ass book. Let's head over to Enoch, um, the 98th verse. Let's head over to the 98th verse. I got I to gotta get up out of here, brothers and sisters. Let's head over to the 98th verse. Okay, 98th verse, section 5, 98th verse. I don't read the whole book of Enoch. I know what it's talking about. All right, 98 verse. And it don't correspond with the Bible. 98 verse of the book of Enoch. Let's look at 98 and verse 4. Um, 98 verse 4. I have sworn unto you, ye sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave, and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman. Even so, sin has not been sent upon the earth, but of himself, but man of himself hath created it. All right, we already went over that. That's what 98 and verse 4 tells you. It tells you that man himself created sin. But then when you look in the book of Enoch 10 and 8, it tells you that, um, um, and when you look in the book of Enoch 10 and 8, it tells you that Azazel was responsible for creating the sin. So when you read the book of Enoch, man, I'm just telling you right now, the majority of the book of Enoch teaches that angels introduce man to sin. Now, this verse says that man created sin by him damn self. By him damn self. That's crazy, man. So, once again, the book of Enoch, no. No, leave this book alone. Get rid of it, brothers and sisters. Trash it. Leave it alone. Get rid of it. Both of them, whatever book you have, throw that shit away in the garbage, man. Because the book of Enoch is not biblical inspired. It's not the same book that Jude quoted from. Once again, it's been another lesson concerning the Solid Foundation Israelite like Academies. No, it was a long lesson, but it was worthwhile. The elect of the nation of Israel, 
If you have eyes to see, ears to hear, let them perceive, let them hear what is being said. Until next time, we say shalom.